Hi. Good evening. How are you doing, Matthew? Fine. How is Hello, Matthew. How are you doing? Good evening. Yeah, good evening. How is everything now? Thank God. How is the election at Oshun? Ah, thank God. At least that um, we're done and um, they started announcing results in different polling units. Okay. That's good. Um, I saw your post. That's yep. why I know that. And it seems like it's some post. Yes. Okay. A, a good Nigeria. You said what? I said I saw your post, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying <triatic>. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I've actually been um, very um, vocal about, um, you know, PVC collection, especially when the registration was on. Then it seems like the only thing I was discussing about, I think for like the month of February, March. Thank you. Hello? I just feel like it's not make sense for me to just, you know, talk about it and not take action in line with it. So ah, I just had to challenge myself to, you know, take action. I think the uh, Senate it's uh, the deadline for... Yes, yes. Um, it's now July 30th, I think. Last time I heard. I don't mind the last month, yeah. Have you, uh, have you registered? Do you have your PDC? Yes, I've registered. I've registered. Oh, great, great, great. You're doing well. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> well. So I just want to like sit outside because it seems like the network inside my house is not breaking. It's breaking currently, Abby. Yes. yes. Wow. What about now? Um, I can hear you now. You can hear me now clearly, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> I'm coming. Let me. Let me see.
Hello, guys. Can you hear me? Hello. Can anybody hear me, please? Yes, we can. Oh, okay, I can. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. So I basically had to run around and look for another space where I could sit. So yeah, what has um I just want to hear from you guys, your experience so far, what you're looking forward to after you so let's not talk about your experience so far. Let's talk about what you're looking forward to after this event. Anybody can talk, anybody can talk. You can unmute yourself. Hello. I guess I should just name somebody. Seems like we are shy people in the house. So um Let me hear from you. Let's hear from you. What are your you know? What are you looking forward to, especially from what you blow up and your own personal development? Oh yeah, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Um, I sister you. Yeah, good evening, everybody. You're straight to the question. Why you, I know, why am I the first to be like this? Probably me I should <laughs> All right, so my expectation, I'm sorry, my I got the question. I'm so sorry, boy. I'm just tense the bit though. Like, why am I the face? All right. So my expectation after the program, I guess that's the question, right? Yes, yes. All right. So it's just to still dwell more on what has been taught. You know, this is a value stuff. It's not your you no, know, so people would pay money for this stuff, but getting this stuff freely, I should maximize this opportunity, go back to the um, recordings, your strand, pick the dots, pick everything that is valuable that I can actually, everything is valuable. So even the full stop when the speaker was speaking, the way they presented, no, the, way, the presentation was so, so nice. I really learned like how to present the full stop. And these ones are not like the structural stuff, but me, I love to see things outside of things. So looking at how the presentation went, and stuff like that. Then everything they said, try to put them in practice, into practice. You know, it's always said that it's applied knowledge that is the best. It's not just knowledge of you, yours hearing and yours trying to attend the program just because we should just try and count number. But no, we should try and apply everything that is said. So that's my expectation of me being to discipline myself. I don't know the English to use, to discipline myself to hear everything all over again. If it cause data, if it cause anything that I suppose, just try and listen to it all over and all over again, because that's the best way I guess for myself, I can get the best out of this program. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, Blue uh, So um, I think the second question I asked is, what are you looking forward to from White or Blue World going forward? What are like, the things you're all right, looking forward from white of um, global is I'm actually there was a time you no know, I guess this might not be really personal though probably looking forward to much more opportunities again then probably maybe to serve with them I'm still trying to look at it trying to balance things and I, I can see the value that is there yeah this is not my first time of attending something like this has been organized by white of global you know I should say probably maybe we're kind of observant about it so looking at how to join to contribute my own quota to and also looking for much more impactful section with white or blue but thank you very much thank you very much thank you. okay so the second person i want to ask from is matthew matthew you have the mic okay good evening everyone good evening um, my expectation so far has been it has been met when I look at when we started the, uh, the, during, the all the, during the course of the program, please, I'm so sorry, I'm, I'm on the road too. Uh, during the course of the program, I have been blessed with a, a whole lot of uh, personal development training. When we talk about how to develop ourselves, it has been a, a, a good one for me on my side. I'm looking at the way we also uh, schedule the group, the way we manage people, the way we interact with people, so I've been able to also meet with some people of like minds, discuss together. So to me, the program is excellent. And 
on the second uh, question you asked, that our expectation, I think you can make a, maybe we should not just end the program and we are done with white people. There should be a synergy between us that, so that you can relate with us, check on our growth, on our, and how we are coping, how we are doing. So that will be a good way to make sure that all we are taught in the course of the training is effective. So please, I don't know, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. So that's just my own personal view about your question. All right, thank you very much. Okay, so um, I think the question you missed was, what are you looking forward to personally as you progress? This is like end of week two, week three is by the corner. What are you looking forward to on a personal level? I did not hear you, Claudima. I said, um, the, the question you missed was, what are you looking forward to you know, on a personal level. For example, um, Sean talks about the fact that he wants to, you know, revisit what has been learned. He wants to, you know, re, uh, review everything he has learned in order for him to you know, start practicing them. So I'm asking that, what are you doing for yourself? You know, things you want to do yourself you know, to ensure that the impact you get here does not just go with the three weeks. Okay, I, I, I got your question. And even from this uh, the start of the program, I've been able to start applying some uh, 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 this uh, this layer, what we have received from the course of the program. And one of the things I actually have adapted and I've seen it working, when it is the art of discipline. So being a leader, at least you should be able to discipline yourself, uh, be, uh, be strict with time, make sure that you keep to appointment, you keep to deadline, you meet deadline. So, and this is one of what White Top has been able to taught me in these few weeks that we started the program. And I believe looking at, looking, reading the Testament of Growth from people of uh, value as also is a, is a call to action for me. So, and going back to as uh, one of our, uh, the first speaker of, of our set, going back to the audio listening again, also we be able to make us to go far. So we are not just, going through these three weeks for the sake of coming to a personal development class. So we are still going to apply it. I'm still going to apply. I'll be applying it and I'm seeing it work. So thank you. Ma. Great. Thank you so much for that, uh, Matthew. Yes, I would say that in fact, uh, I think there was a particular session. I think it was Victor Adeni. I can't remember which one. Maybe it was Thomas. I was talking about the fact that you want to develop a new habit. Let's say you want to start waking up by five o'clock. You don't set your alarm at five and then expect yourself to wake up at five. And it just reminded me of the fact that we, anyway, there was a time you used to do this thing, right? That you're going to set like four alarms before the real, you know, alarm. And, you know, uh, it, it was just like a reminder for me. And I remember I was supposed to someone, uh, uh, I was supposed to have something to do at 5 a.m. And I set my alarm for 4.30, 4.45, and then 5 so when my alarm rang, when I go around at 4 30, I was like, oh, okay. In fact, what if it was when it rang at 4 30? You know, I was not conscious. I was just like, okay, what is actually going on? What is going on? Then it just occurred to me that, hi, you have a meeting. <laughs> so I had to, you know, wake up and then in this movie, to let me do something again. The 4 45 woke me up again. I was like, okay, okay, this is working. And yeah, I'll say that. Yes, thank you so much for that. Okay. Um, I would want to ask, um, I, I want to just two more questions, um, Peter and um, uh, Abu Bakr. Let me hear from Peter. The question is, what are you looking forward to personally? How are your expectations been met? One, and what are you looking forward to personally, like after this event? And what are you looking forward to on your own personal level? And what are you looking forward to from White or Global? After Rise of Warriors. Hello, Peter, are you with us? Can anybody hear me? Yes, yes I can hear you, ma'am. Okay, so Peter, I did it. Are you with us? 
All right, thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Trust our day today was very fantastic and productive. Um, I was a Oshun election at our side, so it doesn't come with violence. Uh -uh. No, no, no. <laughs> Now, okay, um, the question is, uh, what are my expectations uh, from um, RAW 4.0 by now? As my expectations remains, what are my expectations um, from White Top Global after this program? Um, to start yes. with, uh, my expectations from RAW, and there is one thing I have in mind before doing something, there's one thing that and that is what, what am I going to gain from this thing? I remember the day I want to register for this program. Part of my thought that day was, ah, will, will it be able to contribute to my personal development? Will it make me to realize some things in my self-discovery journey now? And I must confess, honestly, it has really gone far, honestly. Because, you know, working with great minds, with like minds, people will always want encourage and charge you more. It will always give you what you want. And RAW, uh, RAW 4.0 uh, program has really made me to meet a lot of like minded people, like. So I know you boss AY before and a lot of people like that. Yeah, so and for me not to lie or not to bore your crew. Honestly, row 4.0 has immensely added to my personal development journey. Honestly, because it has there's one thing it has boost or let's say boosted in me, and that is what discipline. That is discipline. No matter how you want to be punctual in your doings, no matter how you want to uh, be determined, focus, your consistency, your it has to do with discipline. So when you add the discipline, everything will work. Even let, let me use this as an instance. The organization uh, organizers of this program say there is one thing in them all, and that is discipline. It is that discipline. That, that helped them to work hand in hand and that made this program to, us, to become a successful one, honestly. And my suggestion from um, White Top Global after, um, okay, let me just put this out. Um, I, I, I look forward to join the community, um, even though I've tried before, even before this um, row 4.0, so to join the community. And I personally have looked about this community, talked about it to people, and I know part of those people that I talked to about it have joined the community. And I know there is one thing or the other that, are, that is still, um, uh, what will I call it? making not to have joined. So part of my expectations after this 4.0 program is to join quite a um, global community and to learn more, to explore, and to keep keeping my personal development journey going. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, back here. Thank you so much. OK, um, Peter, are you here now? Or should I call someone? Wait, we've been having guys. No, 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 no. no. I am, I am here. Mm. Okay, Peter, let's hear from you. Then I'll pick two ladies to compliment what we've been. The guys' voice is very. Ladies came late, actually. That's why. All, all right. All right. If, if I, if I can, if, if, it, um, sorry, please pardon me. I'm quite all over the place right now. Okay, if, if I get it correctly, what are my expectations from Ruru Wabi? I think that's the question. 
how has Rufo for Zero met your expectations? What are you looking forward to from White Oak Global and from your own self after this program? All right, all right. Thank you very much. Um, all right. Um, and please, I'm being sincere now and Please, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not trying to puff up or anything now. It's what I want to say. So, uh, I, at least I, in a way, I know I've been on this. I think my journey of purpose discovery and self-discovery to started 2020 during the Corona time. And these past two years have been good times, actually. So, and I can tell you, before I joined White Up, I just finished a 15 weeks, um, I just finished a 15 weeks course in, school of, in, in a school, School of Purpose and Influence. It was, it was the week I graduated. I think it was the next, next week that I joined this white up too. And many of the things I'm learning here, I've in a way learned them before in Eurasia. But you know why, why I joined basically, the first reason was, you know, I've, I've, I've realized the, the importance of, of having a community of like minds. It does so much, it does wonders in one's life. You know, at least being at home for this as we strike, you know, there is this tendency, you know, I think I've mentioned it there before that you, I just sometimes just look back at this four or five months, you'll be like, Peter, have you really done anything with your life? But at least I know that the, 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 the weeks I've joined, at least I said I just finished a school of 15 weeks. Those 15 weeks were like, at least the rigorous training I went to, I had to do, we had Saturday classes, we had Thursday quizzes, I had to submit assignment every week. That that kept me on my toes. And I I, I couldn't just relax, re relax, sorry. So joining a community, I just, I just I was like, well, I was finished now, and I asked for the application, I was, I was like, Peter, let me join again. At least this three weeks again, I know I'll be very engaged. I know I won't waste time. Because I, I tell you, well, sometimes when you are not accountable, when you don't have a community, it's quite difficult. This, this, this purpose thing, this, this self discovery thing can be difficult because that discipline may not be there enough. So at least that's one major thing. I that's one major factor. Again. And again, being a clan leader, it's, it has really helped me to know that I, I, I can't slack. You have to come every day, post. You have to do the task. You have to use, and in a way. That's that's the motivation, but at least it's it's helping me actually. So that's like the number one reason I joined White House to make sure that at least this time I'm not wasting it. I'm not saying okay, I want to I don't want to do this journey on my own. I want to at least when I when I'm in a community of like minds, I want to be able to do things together with them. At least when they, when we are given tasks, I know that I don't want to fail. I know that I'll surely do the tasks. So that has some that's been that was like the motivation for me to join White House, and so far it has been met. And again, another thing that I, I, I'm I'm really grateful for is. You know, at least this self-discovery journey, I've been asking, you know, you, you have questions, you ask me like, I, in a way, I'm, I'm like a multi-talented person and I've been finding, I've discovered my passions in different things and I'm like, Peter, wait, should, you, should I do one first? How should I do it? But, you know, thank God for all our speakers. Agbebe, uh, Mr. Mr. Damilare, um, or every one of them, you know, they did their testament of growth. This person is this, this person is this person. That's yeah, like four or five things. I'm like, ah, Peter, it's like I'm on the way as in, I'm, I'm not saying that I want to be all over the place, but at least I, it has really val given me a validation that Peter, this your interests are valid. This your person is valid and you can go for them all. So I'm like, like now somebody, I'm, I'm somebody that I'm, I'm interested in agriculture. At least I, I, mean, I, I still, I, I still go to farm sometimes. Even this at home, I've still, my father is a farmer. So I've been like, and I want to even do more, more than just, using cutlass and I want to do more. Seeing I've been in and I, okay, I, I'm somebody too that I, I have the passion for raising young ones, raising youth, giving them the best mentorship. So all these things, uh, but reading the testament of growth of every of the speakers and every of the speakers coming to get coming to speak to us, I've been like, wow, Peter, I can I can get this too. If people can, are doing this express, I can do this too. So I hope I've not wasted our time. Sure. So I think that's like the major thing. So White of us, row four point zero has been amazing so far, and I've, I'm, I'm really glad I, I'm here, and I've, it has been, it has been a good time actually. It has been a good time, and at least I know that forward, uh, it, it is implementation time. After this time, it is implementation time. I just need to implement everything I've learned here, and thank God for the friends I've made here. Thank God for the relationships I've made here too. At least we keep ourselves accountable, and I know that from here on we are just firing on. And yeah, I I I don't I didn't know of the white dog community before now, and I think uh, it's something that I would love to want to join too, Sha. Okay, okay, wow, that's that's a lot. Thank you so much. Sir. 
uh, for pouring out to us. Okay, so um, I realized that we had just guys talking, and uh, we need to be able to compliment what we have decided to do. So since I said, yeah, all oh, should raise your hand if you want to talk, and nobody raised their hand, I'm going to just pick randomly. So the first person that is entering my eye is Omolade Olorun. Peter, you can meet yourself now. Omolade, are you with us? Peter, please meet yourself. <laughs> Omolade. Okay, Omolade is not here. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, good oh, evening. Okay. Hello, good evening. <laughs> Did you get the question? Are you with us? Peter, please meet yourself so that we have less. Oh, I'm here. I'm here. Sorry. Are you okay? Welcome back. Thank so, did you. you hear the question? Sorry. I think I got part of it, but can you repeat it for me? Sorry. All right. So the question is, how has the how has Rule Four Point Zero met your expectations so far? One, and what are you looking forward to personally and from White Up Global as you progress and wrap up? Okay. Okay. So good evening, everyone. Sorry, I was on the road, so I had to come inside. That's why I couldn't speak. Okay, so my expectations, I mean, they've been met and exceeded. And there are so many things I've needed to unlearn. And it's been mind blowing, honestly. I've attended a couple of boot camps, <laughs> so to say. But I mean, this one just, it changed it for me because there are so many things I thought I knew that I didn't actually know. And there were so many things I realized that I needed to start implementing in my life. And I think that's very good. So yeah, it has met my expectations and exceeded. It's been like the best two weeks, at least so far. Yeah. And I think every every speaker has done really and did their thing and blessed. <laughs> So yeah, what am I looking forward to? Is that the next question? Yes. Okay. So I feel like I'm I'm very expectant of the next SWYK sessions because I mean the first five or the past five, they've been really good. I can't wait to see what the other sessions come with because I mean, it's three weeks, so I want to have three weeks of, you know, goodness. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to what they have. And I'm really hoping that in the next coming days, I can, you know, put all of these things into my life, my career, and my whole person as a whole. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. Then, your expectations, what are you looking forward to from White of Global? Oh, White of Global. After we leave or right now? After we leave right now. As we are sure about to leave. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I know I know why the global is. I mean it's even global already. We're going places. That's one thing. Because, because I mean, obviously, all of us that would be graduating, if I can say that. One person, I, I mean, unless you just want to lie about it, we've all gained a lot, a whole lot. And then when we become certain people in the society, we'll always refer to this particular time of our lives and we'll say, okay, no, this did it for me. And I mean, we have amazing people on the team. So I know that we are going places and we're going to do really amazing things in this country and beyond. So, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you yes, so much. So I can see Omolade is prophesying global expansion. Hey, <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yes, okay, so the second amazing lady that is entering my eye, all of you are entering my eye for real. But let me just, I need to pick just one person. Just one person. 
Ah. Okay, Rebecca, I'm not, I'm not sure I've heard your voice before. I did it, Rebecca. Are you with us? Oh, yes, good evening. Yeah, good evening. How are you doing? I'm fine. I'm doing great. Okay. So, do you, do you know the questions I've been asking? Yes. Um, I just joined not quite long now. Okay. So you get the question. So Okay, so uh, the question is, how has um, how has this event met your expectations? One, so what are you looking forward to from yourself and from White Global as we progress? Okay, what was the first one, please? Sorry. How has this event met your expectations? Okay, okay, you? okay. Now I get it. Okay, so the last few days has been, they've been amazing actually. Like I've been challenged. Let me just put it like that. I've actually been challenged. Actually, like I've been seeing things that I'm, I'm like, oh my God, what have I been doing? You know, things like that. And, you know, I'm taking intentional steps, even about my own self-development too. You know, seeing people, seeing different speakers, you know, leadership, time, youth, everything. Each, every speaker have been amazing. Like they've been really amazing. And um, I'm looking forward to more. Even in the few days that are left, I'm looking forward to more. I'm looking forward to like seeing more than, and it's not even about just gaining all this knowledge. You know, it's the application that matters. It's being intentional about even all that we've learned. So um, I'm looking forward and so help me God to like um, um, use this, everything we've been taught to like implement them and all. So that's basically it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rebecca, thank you. Okay guys, so sincerely, I wish I could hear from all of you. <laughs> but I feel like, okay, maybe I'm going to do a different interview session on that different. But I want to appreciate everyone for your sincere responses. I want to also appreciate you for, you know, everything, 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 basically. Thank you so much. In fact, let me just like, I am, my head right now, I just remember some calls I was speaking to this morning when I talked about interviews. Don't help me. All right. So, um, welcome, guys. Tonight is um, another amazing time. And um, basically, another warrior's where we get to learn, where we get to understand and ask questions. And I don't want us to be you know, shy about you know, asking questions. For real, there's no, there's nobody. I think Priscilla was the one who said it, and it has just been ringing. Something that I wish I could just climb to the top of the mountain and tell everybody, nobody has it all figured out. Nobody has it all figured out. But we are moving step by step towards clarity. So it's like, you're going somewhere and then you shall know that greatness is for you, right? You shall know that the future is, you shall know what God has you know, sent you on earth to do. But how do you now get there? How do you move from here to your place of destiny, to your place of vision, to that vision that you're saying? So it, it takes, you know, little steps. Those little steps you're taking, oh, you're clear on this, then take that step. You're clear on this, take another step. So I, I want us to see this as a moment to learn. I also want to see this as I, I also want us to see this as a moment to share. That is why um I think there's something I've been wrong, um talking about in the last that I think that was on Sunday. And I'm saying that guys share your action points. When I say share your action points, now there are some questions specifically that was asked in the um what's it called now in the Rural Warriors Guide under the share share action points section. And if you see, if you see three questions, you're supposed to answer yourself. See, I, I want to beg you, like, if you don't answer it on your plan, answer it personally. Like, answer it in your own book. Like, write it down in your own book. Write it down in your own book. Don't, don't limit yourself, right? Because there's one thing that, there's one thing that I've been learning recently that if, for me, I don't know about other people, if I don't write things down, it's easy for it to fly out of my brain. It's easy for me to forget this. 
it's easy for me to you know not remember that this is part of the things that i ought to do right now so ensure all the sessions that we have gone through if you want to um you know, just, if you want to um, say okay you want to rewatch any or any thing or whatever you should open it like what actions will i take what are the specific things i'm going to do going forward right so it's very very important and let's please pay attention to this so yes keep journal thank you that that's great in fact i have to open a new email uh, address for my diary i call it i call it diary like it's just a place where okay i want to share about my day i can even write it i can even write what i've learned and send it to that place it's going to be there for life the only thing that the only thing that can make me not have the access to it again is if i lose my password and i lose every access to it or maybe you know, the password to the account i'm using to pass it up and all that stuff so there are ways around these things right if you're someone who picks a book write it in a book if you're someone who pull out typing more type it out right so tonight we'll be having uh, an amazing person with us that Ajayi Abdusoye. Ajayi Abdusoye happens to be one of the amazing team members that we have on this team to you know, bring up the, the White of Global Rise of Warriors 4.0. She joined us in 2020 uh, during the one 1.0 years. So if you notice the trend, with the, the people we are bringing I, are mostly people that we resort in 2020. I think it's only Samuel that joined us last year or so. And why do why are we recommending them? Why can I say that, oh, Abisoye is the go-to person for this? It's because of, you can see the growth. You can see it. It is evident. It is evident. You can see, like, I don't know how to say this without repeating myself. Give away this night. So tomorrow, but I'm saving my money for tomorrow. Where is where is Sunday? I'm gonna do it today tomorrow. Don't worry. <laughs> don't don't eat all my money today. Okay, so as I was saying, except if you want us not to give away tomorrow, so we do we do it today. So like I was saying, um, yeah, Abisa is an amazing person. She is um a final year student in the department of uh, the department, no faculty of law. You know, a barrister in the making, clearly, clearly. Rich auntie, rich auntie, the thing like that is her name. Call her rich auntie, the thing. Every other thing, I don't know. But she's a rich auntie, so you see her villa, and at the same time, she happens to speak like this in her hand. So she's in amazing and um, it's an honor to you know, have her here with us to share insights on how. If, if you're talking about people that have stress, I think the thing is like, I'm sorry, I'm just saying it's like the best of people talk about it. Yes, I like, I'm not even. So, uh, Adiolu, can we have our, let's have our video play. Do you have it? If you do not have it, you can easily walk around that. If you have it, please play it for us so that, so that we can listen and then invite our own. Hello, Adil, are you with us? Okay. Abisoye Ajayi is a law on the graduate with keen interest in entrepreneurship, investment. Abisoye Ajayi is a law on the graduate. A round of applause. Let me see your excitement. Let me see your energy as we bring up our very own Abisoye Ajayi. Okay, so let's have Abisoye on board. Thank you very much. Welcome, Abisoye. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, so guys, for tonight's section, but before I get to that, I want to say a very big thank you to White Top Global for giving me the platform to talk to young minds tonight. Like, I'm very honored. And it's been an honor to be part of White Top Global because ever since I joined White Hope as a participant in Row 1.0. It has been amazing. And I'm sure everyone here can see that too, that since they've started this bootcamp, they've been gaining insights and it has been amazing. So for tonight's section, it's going to be very practical and 
Okay, tonight's section is going to be more like a therapeutic section. I'm going to be your therapist and you will be my client. So I will need us most times to unmute our mic and answer me when I ask questions. I hope we are following. Yes, we are. Yes, okay, so tonight I'll be speaking on emotional yes, intelligence and least stress within and without. But before I go deep into stress, I would like to give a surface overview about emotional intelligence. I hope we are following. Okay, so let me ask, yeah. how many of us do we consider ourselves being emotionally intelligent? How many of us? You feel you're emotionally intelligent? I do. Okay. Ah, uh, I do. Ma. Okay. Okay, so how do you know you are emotionally intelligent? Can I ask a question? I just need one person to answer that question. Okay, um, how do I know that I'm emotionally intelligent? Personally, yes. I think about my thoughts, like whenever I'm going through any sort of overwhelming thought, I take my time to sit down and you know, try to separate everything and see why am I feeling this way? And also, I feel like I have a bit of empathy. It's something I am improving on, working on gradually, but I can see that, yes, I don't just, you know, talk. It's rare for me to you know, just open my mouth and just say, what exactly it is that I want to say. I just find a way to refine the English and ensure that it's not going to be painful to whoever I say that I'm saying. Yeah. Mm, that's beautiful. Okay, so let me give um, a very lead, a brief explanation, or should I say, definition of emotional intelligence. Now, emotional intelligence is your ability to understand and maintain your own emotions and others, meaning you've been able to, when you find yourself in a situation where things get emotional, you are able to calm yourself and be like, calm down, don't overreact. And you feel, okay, probably a friend did something to you. Okay, let me give you a scenario. Now, why is it that most times when we lose friends, why is it that most of us see it as a big issue like we get traumatized because of it or probably a breakup. Oh my God, my boyfriend broke up with me. I want to drink IPO. Why? If you're someone with emotional intelligence, you will understand the fact that there has to be a reason why this person is doing this. You feel, okay, I stopped talking to a friend. I'm sure most of us have friends that we stop talking to. If I ask us what's the reason, most of us have different reasons. But some of us will be like, uh she betrayed me or we just we just lost the vibe i have a friend whom we're very close at a point in time and we stopped talking and the reason being that i realized that the person the pattern or should i say manner in which the person thinks is not in my league let me use that word like i'm the kind of person and i feel be yourself or should I use the word? You see people that like catching crews with people. Let me, let me start that point. People that like catching crews with people, eh? Those people, I don't know why they do it, but it's very wrong. Most times when you catch crews with people and it falls on the wrong side of the person, it ruins relationship a lot. Now, what I want to talk about tonight is not basically emotional intelligence, but how you're going to handle stress. But I want to brush through emotional intelligence. So now for you, to be emotional, if you are claiming to be emotionally intelligent, it means you have emotional awareness. You have, like Miss Ayamide said, you have empathy. Like you can feel the way others would feel. Then if you're not emotionally aware that, okay, this is people emotion, we are different. We have different ideology. I think probably because I'm a Christian and person is a Muslim, or probably because person is from a polygamous family, I'm from a monogamous family, or probably because I feel I'm the kind of person that likes luxury and this person is actually poor. Our thinking will be different. Now, once you're emotionally aware, then you have the ability to harness emotion and you apply them to your thinking. 
you know, you do not rush to judge people. You need to tolerate people. You need to have this understanding. Like when something happened, don't just jump into conclusion. If you check the two sides of the coin, what if this is this? What if this is that? Now, the ability for you to be able to manage your emotion will help you regulate your own emotions. There are sometimes things happen to us and we are not supposed to react. But because most of us lack emotional intelligence because they won't even teach us, you know, so they don't really teach us. So most times you might need to go learn it yourself. But because we lack emotional intelligence, we react when we are not meant to react. Sometimes probably you hear someone say your friend did this or did that. Some people will not even bother ask that, why did you do this? Instead, what they are going to do is they just judge. She did it, that's all. If you're emotionally intelligent, you know you are meant to like calm down, reason and be like, what if I was this person? Would I act this way? Why did this person act this way? What is wrong? You try to put yourself in that person's position. If you're someone that is emotionally intelligent, I mean, if you want to be or you want to act like you're emotionally intelligent, you need to be able to feel things differently, not one way. You feel them differently. You see them in different perspective, not just one perspective. You understand the fact that we all have different ideas. We came from different upbringing. The way my mom has taught me to behave can never be the way someone else's mom would have told them. I hope we are following. Yes, Maria. Wow. Okay, so you need to be able to see things differently. And then you experience it like, the most important thing about emotional intelligence is about you being able to put yourself in someone's position. And you realizing that it's not all the time I have to be aggressive. Now, there's something again, a lot of us are suffering from emotional down to all, should I use the word? We are emotionally sick, let me use that word. And the moment you're emotionally sick, you are always lonely. You feel this loneliness always. You're always scared. And once you have that two category, like once you have that two features in you, you feel lonely all the time, you overthink or you, you're scared that, okay, someone is going to, or probably a few, my friends won't talk to me again if I do something, or you feel, if anybody knows this about me, they'll stop talking to me. It starts giving you a different, you, your behavioral attitude changes because you, feel, you always feel lonely. Imagine you should be in a crowd of like 30 people and the only thing you're thinking is, ah, I'm not okay, I'm not happy, nobody cares. But well, don't let me bore you too much with emotional intelligence. My topic today here is, or should I say what I want to stress myself on today is only stress within and without. Now, I'm sure I've asked us, what's the stress? Most people will be like, okay, when you get tired, when you do this, when you do that. But let me ask you, what are the things that you do that stresses you out? Can I have an answer? What are the things you do that stresses you out? Mm, for me, it's probably having too many um, chores at once or too many um, roles at once. It stresses me. So I have to like take a break and, you know, pick out those things one by one, then start to sort it out. Okay. One thing about stress is the most important thing about stress is you being able to know that, yes, I'm stressed. Like you have to be aware that, okay. I'm stressed because that's the only way you can actually tackle a problem. If you don't know the sort of problem, you can't tackle it. So what's the stress? Stress is your body's response to challenge. Like you said, you said when you have too much chores and you feel you get stressed. That's because one, you're over stressing your brain, you're over stressing your body because you have a lot to do and you want to meet up with time. That's stress for you. But we have different symptoms of stress. We have the physical stress, the physical symptom, we have the behavioral symptom, and we have the emotional symptom. Now, if you are stressed, you can start feeling back pain. 
It can start feeling headache, probably at bone, high blood pressure, with stress. Then we have the behavioral symptom. Once you are actually stressed, you become impatient. You start probably tapping your leg or your hand, just doing something that, like, you are not calm. Then, when you are stressed, for instance, probably you are you are working or even in school, and you want to read a particular book, you start procrastinating. If you ah, I do I cannot read this book. I'll read it later. There's sometimes like you get stressed and. You even cry because you feel, oh, I'm feeling, I can't meet up with deadline. Then we have the emotional symptom. You are nervous, you get nervous, like you get hungry, you get depressed. Let me paint a scenario for you of being stressed. Um, I'm someone that I don't like reading for long hours and I saw my friend reading for long hours and I'm like, let me try it out. So I decided to try it out and I read all night till the next morning of the exam. Then not knowing for me that beautifully stressed my brain and my eyes. Then I got to the exam hall and I went blank. Let me use that word. And I'm like, what's going on? And I'm like, I was nervous. Like I've never felt that way in exam before, but I felt it at that moment. I was tensed. Like I was like, what's going on? It was as if I did not read anything. That was where I was feeling. And I was like, what's going on? Like, what did I do wrong? Then it was, but after the exam, I realized that, okay, wait, though. I don't even do this thing before, like me reading for these long hours. I know my body. So why did I decide to like take the risk of reading this long period? Now, there's something about stress. Most times, stress is something that happens to us every day of our life. Now, there is something in our body that is called the fight and flight response. Meaning, when we are in danger, we... Our body tends to produce this hormone that triggers them like, I need to fight or I need to run. Now, let me give us a scenario. Imagine you are, you are walking and you see a very wild dog like barking and more like the dog is coming towards you. Now, what's going to happen to you? There's something. With the way you're looking at that dog, obviously it's going to bite if it gets to your side. But deep down in your mind, the only thing that comes to your mind is run. You can't even fight the dog. You want to run. Now, if at that moment, if I ask you that, what is your name? In all sincerity, you know your name, but you won't tell me. It's not like you do not know your name, but you will not tell me. Why? At that point in time, your brain is stressed. And because your brain is stressed, once your brain is stressed, the only thing, and you are scared, the only thing that comes to your mind is, I want to run. At that moment, your brain gets suppressed, like your thinking gets suppressed. And the only thing you are thinking of is, I want to run. Because your brain is stressed, like the hormone, I so triggered it that your thinking faculty has gone dormant. Or for instance, let me say that, okay, let me use the same scenario. The dog is coming. You know it's coming to bite you. The only thing your brain and your body is thinking is run, run for your life, run for your life. Let's say there is probably a gutter filled with chemicals that you deep down, you know that if you jump inside, you might have cancer. Forget it, you will jump inside. Because the only thing you are thinking of is, I want to escape. Or probably, maybe why you are just trying to run for your life. Somebody sneeze. <laughs> for instance, COVID-19, I say, okay, if someone sneeze, try to cover your nose or something. At that moment, you will not even remember to cover your nose. So let me say the person sneeze. You, get, you inhale the person's air and boom. But the funny thing is, normally we have immune system now that will fight it. You see, at that moment, even your immune system will not work because it's dormant. The only thing, the only hormone working in your body is your fight and flight response. The only thing you think is, I want to run, I want to run for my life, and that's all. Now, most times when we walk, we realize that or probably, okay, let me ask the question. 
How many of us have fallen sick because of a test before? I've not it, uh, is it a kind of examination or? A test or an exam. You just fall, you realize that you fall sick before this, probably in your one out of the exam or a day, you just fall sick. Not sick, maybe stomach upset yeah. or I just start having intense headache. Yes. Exactly. This is it. Because you are trying to prepare for that test or exam. You are tense about the exam. You are fearing you that, ah, I must read for this exam. And you will not want to drop your book. You shall want to read, it. You might even take a break. The funny thing is, instead of you to read for two hours, you might feel, no, it's not enough. Ah, uh, no, it's not enough. I need to read more. At that moment, even if... Okay, let me give a scenario. Now, for instance, you said you start having headache. And you feel, I have exam tomorrow. Ha, it's not a headache. You start casting and biting. You start praying. Headache, leave me. Use prastamon. Okay. Now, the thing is, at that moment, the only thing I'm thinking is, I want to read for my exam. I want to read for my exam. You don't even give, a, like, you don't care if the headache is something that is very serious that you should actually take care of. You feel, first time, is okay. You feel, let me just pour it on my head. You see, at that moment, if you refuse to take a break with the way you are stressing your brain, you, you break down. That's just it. Because at that moment, the only thing in your mind is, I don't care even if I fall sick. Let me, actually, we say it now, we are students. I don't care if I fall sick. Let me just finish this exam. Then imagine, because you don't care before sick, you read, you read, you stress your brain. Your brain gives you a signal that I need to rest. I need to take a break. But you say, no, like, yeah, we must read this book because I've never read anything. It's not entering my brain. Then there are some people, they just collapse inside the exam mode or they forget things in the exam mode. Now, the reason why you forget things most time in the exam mode is not like the devil is following into the exam mode. It's because you've, you've stressed your brain and you refuse to accept the fact that you are stressing your brain because you want to meet up with the deadline because you feel, I must read for this exam. So it's very important that you know that, okay, I'm stressed. I said that you are stressed. I know that, okay, what should I do? Because the thing is, if you don't take time for stress management, it will cost you more than your time. If I thought that you are saying you are reading for exam, I want to make sure I read the, um, the four topics the lecturer gave me. If you get to a stage where your body breaks down, you might not be able to write that exam. Now imagine you don't write the exam with your friends, then you'll be writing your exam after. Because you don't want to, you, like, you don't want to take your time to take your father, okay, let me take a break. If you know, no, I must meet up, I must meet up. Now it's costing your time. So the thing is about stress is you need to know your stress. And once you know it, accept that you are stressed and take a break. Like, it's very important. Take a break. Nothing is going to happen to you if you take a break. Imagine if, let me say, okay, I remember the time, like, let me give you another scenario of stress. Sometimes some stress, eh? It's not even that you need to take a break. It's because you planned it. You like, okay, I'll give us a strategy of managing stress. And I'll to explain some things to you. But uh, let me paint a scenario. I remember there was time my boss gave me something to do at work. And I was given on a Tuesday. So imagine, you know, I procrastinated till Sunday night because I was going to present on Monday. But God helping, I saw lawyers that helped me and my presentation went so beautiful on Monday. I was so proud of myself. My boss was like, you did good. Then the following week, I was given another task, and I feel, I'll do the same thing. I'll do it on Sunday. Then on that Sunday, as God, we have it. All the people I called, all of them were like, they don't have idea. And I'm like, I'm in big trouble. Then I remember I did not sleep till like around three that day. Imagine. And I'm going to work, and I have to wake up by five because traffic, Lagos traffic. So I did my little research. When I got to work, I was still doing research. I was feeling the fact that I'm not okay because my brain, I was, I was, I, okay, let me say I was nervous already because I was checking the time. My boss will soon, be, will soon be around. I'm going to present this thing. I've not even done anything yet. What will I do? What will I do? Then I just decided to rush everything. And I knew I was feeling slight headache, but I feel no, it's a lie. You cannot disgrace me. Even though I was going to disgrace myself. 
Then when I got to the presentation, my boss said, okay, go ahead. And after I said the main points, he said, okay, so what should we do? And I'm like, what should we do? Like, I kept asking, what should we do? He said, Be say, what should we do? I'm like, um, sir, um, he was like, wait, what's wrong? I went blank. Like, my mom really decided to feel me because I refused to give it the respect he wanted. He asked for a break and I feel, no, I need to meet deadline. Now, if, I don't know, most of us, um, what we do is that, the rate at which you get stressed every day is actually way too much. Like, way too much. Now, for instance, let's say that you realize that you are stressed. What do you do when you realize you are stressed? Can I hear someone? What do you do when you realize you are stressed? When I realize that I'm stressed, what I really do is just that I take break from whatever I'm doing and I sleep. That's just one thing I do. Okay. Just sleep. What else? Like, what do you do when you're stressed? Yeah. Anyone else? Like, what do you do when you're stressed? If you don't want to talk, you can use um, the chat okay. box. One okay. thing is, you know, like you said, when you are stressed, you are not productive. So at least I leave everything I'm doing first. Because, you know, that's even one first cause of frustration. When you are stressed and you still continue to do that thing, you get frustrated and you're not productive. So at least... I let that thing be, and I decide, and I get rest. And rest doesn't necessarily mean you sleep. You may find something fun to do, at least to to get yourself back. And if if it's sleep too, but at least I I get away from that activity and I find rest. I can play, do something, or sleep too. Anything that works. Mm, okay, this person said I drink water and watch Kamini Christian. Well, that's a very beautiful way of tackling your stress. We all know what's best for us. The thing is, once you realize you are stressed, just change your focus. Like, change your focus. Probably you're working on an assignment and you realize that you're having maybe muscle pull or back pain or something. Just leave that assignment for some minutes and divert that attention to something else to reduce the tension. Okay, for instance, let me say you're preparing for an interview. You know, most times we get tense when it comes to interview. Instead of you, like... Making that whole thing, because if you go like that to the interview, you might not be able to actually give some, the thing that even normally you'd be able to present probably. So calm down, relax, change the focus. Stop thinking of how, what would they ask me in this interview or, or the, test I'm, um, the test I want to write. What question can come out? Have I covered it? You can just like change focus and just be like, something that is fun. Yeah, something fun that will, Give you a reason to smile. Then be affirmative, like, be like, no, I'm going to do well in this interview. Calm down. Mention your name. Calm down. You will pass this test. Like, you have to, like, be affirmative. Now, okay, I told you a symptom of stress. Now, there are types of stress that even most of us do not know they're actually stress. For instance, let me give us examples. Academic stress. You know, we have to learn and memorize is a stress. Because you are forcing your brain to take it in. Like, you must understand. You, you'll be telling, like, it must enter. Meeting up with assignment and project deadline, preparing for exam, those things are actually stress. Because this is it. Your brain does, you don't write exam all the time. But when it comes to the period of exam, you know how you make your brain work. It's not the way you do it in a normal class. Then that's for academic stress. Then we have the social stress, your friends, peer pressure, like the pressure is high. Then probably you have been to like, you, you want to be the academic person, you want to be the social person. You go to class in the morning from six to eight. You want to attend the club at night. You're not sleeping. You're waking up the next morning to probably go for another class. You're not giving your body the rest it needs. Then finance self can stress you. I don't know if it's just me, but have you ever seen money in your account and you so calculate the money 
that you start having a headache. Like, can I, like, I want response, like, you know, something's wrong with this money. You already calculate and keep calculating. Then we have um, the... Yeah. Okay. Um, concerning the <laughs> money or oh, I can't stop. It, it do happen sometimes. There was uh, one time that it happened to me. Though it, the money was a, a, a group or project money and the money was to be sent to my account. After receiving the alarm, receiving the alarm, I was just like, this money based on my record that I put down is not correlating, is not uh, accurate. I started recalculating, recalculating, recalculating. Ah, no, That's am big. I the one making mistake? Am That's I the true. one making mistake? <laughs> so, you can't even get frustrated along the way. Honestly. Good. So then we have the intrapersonal stress. Now, is it the thing? We have inter and we have intra. Now, intra is your own. You are the one, like you are the cause of the stress. You can't say no to people. Let me do this. Can you come here? Can you do this? You can't say no. It is yes. You don't want to annoy anybody. Then there's also another way you can stress yourself is when you are like, you're extremely giving yourself high expectation, come on. You are like, I must do this thing. Relax, don't rush, don't compete, but be productive. Like you just, you want people to see that mm, this person is doing something. Things you are meant to do stage by stage, you rush everything up, you stress yourself. You want to be everywhere. You want to like, like, be liked by everybody. So you do things to please people, then you stress yourself. Then negative thinking. I don't know if you know, you can actually stress yourself thinking negatively. Thinking that you feel this exam, please, when you think that you feel an exam, how on earth do you want, do you feel like, do you think the response, or should I say the result of what the exam you write is going to be? I'm like, ha, oh God, what if I feel this exam? What if I feel this exam? Fear a setting. That is a form of, that's the type of stress. And if you are going to an exam with the mentality that you are going to fail, you can't pass that exam. There's no miracle that is going to happen because you'll be tensed. Now we have the interpersonal stress. Fighting with your friend, your mommy, your daddy. They're not listening to me. Or your mommy keeps nagging you about something and your brain keeps like, oh God, oh God, I'm, I'm going to leave this house. That's your relationship with people can stress you. Your boss can stress you. Your business partner can stress you. Your roommates can stress you with their behavior, with their attitude with, to you, towards you. Then we have the psychological stress. You don't sleep well. Why? You are sick. Sickness even stresses someone out because I don't know, you won't be productive. So the thing about stress is the moment to know you are stressed, accept the fact that you are stressed. Take a break. See, the thing is, you can't be stressed and say you want you are focused. It's not possible. No. If you are stressed, you cannot be focused because there's pressure in it already. You are tensed. Imagine going to a market. Okay, let me give a scenario. Now, let me say I'm going to market and my plan is when I was going to market is I want to buy pepper, clothes, blah, 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 stuff like that. And I've been in market since six in the, since like nine in the morning. And I promised myself that by three, I'm going to leave market. And by 2.30, I've not seen that skirt I want to buy. And I've not bought pepper. You see, what happened to me is at that moment, one's around 2.40 or 50. And I not still get the skirt. I'm going to buy rubbish. The pepe, I'm going to buy rubbish. One, I'm stressed physically. Two, psychologically, I'm stressed, like, because I've been pounding, pounding, like, and I'm frustrated already. I'm stressed. Once I'm stressed, I get frustrated. So just know that the thing about stress is, once you know you are stressed, take a break. Like, give your body that respect of taking a break. 
Now, okay, I know I'm stressed, but how do I manage stress? Time management. I'm sure they've spoken about time manage time in this boot camp. Time is very important in everything we do, actually. Time is very important. Now, what well, does time management have to do with stress? If you manage your time, meaning if you get organized, you realize that you won't get stressed. If you do things at the time they are meant to be done, you won't get stressed. If you do things at the time you plan it, you won't have to procrastinate it. That's not about stress. You realize that, okay, I have energy this morning. Let me do the things that require me to get focused. Let me do it this morning. So in the evening, I'll just do those things that does not even need my focus so that I won't be too tensed. I won't be, be, I won't be too pressurized. Time management, know how to manage your time, get organized. If you're someone that is organized, you will not get stressed. If you're someone that knows how to use your time wisely, you will not get stressed. Another thing is exercise your body. Exercise your body, exercise your brain. Do things that reduce loneliness, like do things that give you excitement. It could be yoga, it could be breathing, anything that will just calm your nerves. Then there's another way you can actually undo your stress, deep breathing. Like we do a lot of breathing, breathe out, breathe in. It works for some people. It actually works because you get a bit relaxed. Now, there is something about you using the breathing method to undo stress. Now, you slow the breathing. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. You get calm. Then you do a mindful observation. What is stressing me out? Calm down, calm, wait, relax. What exactly is it that is stressing you out? I feel okay, let me work on it. Now, once you face your stress, why is it like, okay? It's because I'm, put, I'm pondering too much on this particular topic. Let me take a break. Then you realize that, okay, you won't be stressed. Instead of whenever you are stressed, instead of you getting scared that you might not meet up with deadline or you might not be able to accomplish what you are supposed to do, be curious about it instead. Think about how can I do it in a way that I would actually meet up with deadline? How would I do it in a way that I would actually do this and it would come out beautifully? So if you want to undo your stress, you should be able to have this mindful observation and you should be able to like know that once I'm stressed, I should not be scared. Instead, I should think of ways to actually help myself. Self, I thought that I was talking about, I said self-talk, talk about it. Like, oh, God, I'm so tired. This market is stressful. What should I do? One of the beautiful ways to actually tackle stress is being excited. Like, be excited. You are frustrated, yes, because you are stressed. You are sad. You are anxious. You want to do it on time. Think of something that will you just make you smile. You feel relaxed. Or just change your concentration into something else. You feel relaxed. Then another thing is when you realize that for a day you have a lot of tasks, break it down. Do it step by step. Prioritize it. The ones that need you to put a lot of focus into it, do it on do it at the beginning. And the one that will not even require your full, like your full concentration, do it later. If you break down your tasks, you won't have to stress because you meet up with deadline. And I told us also when I was talking about the intrapersonal stress type of stress, I said, learn to say no to things. It's not everything you must do. Learn to say no. When someone asks you, can you do this for me? You don't need to say that yes, because you want to prove to the person that you are capable. Tell the person, I can do it, but no, for now, I don't want to have too much on my decks. Learn to say no. Then make time, like, the most important thing in our lives that most of us don't know is Make time for to be happy, like make time for fun. Be happy. No matter how stressed you can be, if you see something that makes you happy, forget it. Even your body will notice that, okay, something is, something has happened. Then also, if you are stressed, there's another way you can actually handle stress. You can talk to someone. Like, 
probably am pounding on an assignment and I feel, oh, what can I do? What can I do? Instead of me pounding and pounding and I start getting a headache, I can just call someone. Hello, why, please. Oh, why, do you know this topic? Or please, you know what I can do about this? Like, express yourself. Say it out. The thing about stress is if you do not take a break when you are stressed, the break will take you. That's just it. You see that break you don't want to take? It will willingly come and take you. And the funny thing is, if you are the one taking the break, you can control it. But if it is the break that is taking you, you will not be able to, you will not be in charge until it's once like, okay, you can go. So when you work out, like, keep working, keep working, you're not taking a break. By the time you break down, eh? You'll be begging yourself to stand up back. So it's very important. You always take a break. It's always, imp- okay. There's some time I'll be like, okay, what if I have too much on my decks? Like, when we say take a break, I did not say you should leave what you're doing. No. Imagine me working on a project and I realize that I'm not feeling comfortable again. As I say, I'm overstressing myself, overstressing my brain. I could just drop my pen at that moment. Probably go to YouTube and just watch a very one funny comedy kit. Or probably I could just look over to the next person beside me and ask that, eh, hey, just a little bit just with the person. Just make the person realize that, okay, you want to change your focus, you want to change your attention. Then after you come back, you realize that you are very relaxed. So the most, the best way for you to actually tackle stress when you are stressed is that you take a break to reduce your tension. Take, take a break and say affirmative words to yourself. Okay, I know I'm stressed. Okay, let me just take a break. But I know I'm going to do this beautifully. I know I'm going to meet up with the deadline. If it's a test, exam, if you are stressed about the exam already, know that, okay, I know I've not covered a lot, but I know I'm going to pass this exam. Don't overdo it. Take a break. I'm still saying it. Take a break. If you do not take a break, the break will take you. So you have to pick one. So, and the thing is, stress is something we experience every day of our life. You see, there's nobody here that will not say they are not. Okay, now let me ask. How many of us are stressed here? Can I, can I, like, I want, how many of us are stressed here? Right now? Yes, how many of us? Okay, today, maybe not right now, but you know you got, like, you were stressed today. Probably you were doing something. Mew, Mew, Mew. I, I, I'm serious. I'm even having a dick present. The thing about stress is that we are stressed. See, I already told us that the funny thing is, even things you don't know that are stress are actually stress. Now I was talking about your roommate can stress you, you don't know they are stressing you out. Someone nagging at you, you're going to get stressed. So the most important thing is, once you are stressed, accept that you are stressed, know that you are stressed, adapt to the fact that, okay, I'm stressed. Then what can I do to handle the stress? Because once you know what stresses you, you'll be able to reduce it. In short, you'll be able to stop it so it's not affect you. I was going through a particular video and it was, they were talking about, okay, people overworking themselves and because they want to reach a deadline and you feel, okay, what can I do? What can I do? And they overdo it, overdo it. Like they so stress themselves that it got it gets to a point that they don't understand what they are doing again. I don't know. I don't know if any of us have been in a situation where we, we are doing something, we keep doing it. Then it gets to a point you realize that you don't know what you are doing again. I don't know. Probably reading. And you read, read, if you what am I even reading? Or maybe you are making a research. And you are tired already. And you just be clicking on things that are not relevant. Or you've actually seen what you want, but your mind will not go to that. That's what you actually want. Because you are stressed already. So 
accept that you are stressed. Yes. Look for a way to tackle it. If you're sleeping, it's not all the time you get the chance to sleep when you're stressed because you might be at work, it might be, an, like, it might be before an exam. You can ever get stressed inside an exam. Just close your eyes and breathe in. Imagine me being stressed inside an exam. Oh, I can't sleep now, so what will I do? Probably I'll just close my eyes for like a few minutes because I know I'm being timed. Breathe in, breathe out, and say to myself, I'm going to pass this exam. So the, be- the most beautiful way to actually tackle your stress is after realizing that you are stressed, take a break. Change, like try to drift your attention from that thing that is making you tense. I'm using exam because that's, let me see one of the ones that, the best thing that actually tends those most times, exam, assignments, deadline, interview. Just like breathe in, breathe out, take a break. And say affirmative words to yourself. I can do this. I will meet up with deadline, even if it's looking like as if it's late already. And there's one funny thing again. Do you know we tend to stress our brain before sleeping? Most of us do not know, but we do. Like we stress ourselves and we do not know. Imagine you're going through social media, Instagram, you know, and the funny thing is the news we listen to and we hear nowadays are so bad for our mental health that imagine you seeing a very bad news before you go to bed. Your brain starts ruminating about it. You start thinking, 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 thinking. Imagine you stressing your brain before sleeping. So the most important thing is do things, avoid stress. We can't avoid stress because it's something that is happening to us every day. But since we know we are stressed, take a break. Just take a break. You don't need to rush it, but you need to work on it. Because if you feel you want to do this, you want to do it on time, you might end up doing rubbish. I mean, it's better for you to actually be like, okay, I'm a bit, I didn't meet up with deadline. Then you meet up with deadline and doing beautiful rubbish, like beautiful rubbish. So on the final note, I want to, what I want to say is, stress is a normal thing in our lives. We are like five and six, humans and stress, five and six. Because in everything we do, we are stressed. Going out, you are stressed. Cooking, you first pound up, pound up, what should I cook, what should I cook, what should I cook? You're stressed. Having a conversation with someone, trying to make person understand you, but because person feel like, no, he's my own, you must understand. We start making arguments. It might not even be an argument, but you know that, okay, things that we're meant to be like, it's fine. We are still asking, should we do, should we do, should we do? So the most important thing is always take a break when you're stressed. And you always know when you're stressed. That was why I gave us symptoms of stress. You always know. So try as much as possible to always take a break when you're stressed. Try as much as possible to always take a break to reduce tension. Say always the positive things to yourself that I'm going to do it. No, I will. I will do this thing. Don't be that person that feels I want to do everything. See, the thing is, one thing about our emotion is when we give too much our expectations, it affects our emotions. It's because we want to do something. We feel, I want to do something. Yes, I'm going to do this thing. I must do this thing. It's what fucks people up most times. You feel, no, me, I must do this thing. Like, you just, you want to do everything. Why? Calm down. You can't do everything. Always take a break. I'm saying it again. If you do not take a break, the break will take you. And when the breaks take you, only God knows 
how you survive. So on the final note, I would say that your emotion depends on your expectations. If you don't have too high expectation on a thing, if that thing does not turn out that way, you will not get disappointed. Know how to leverage your emotions, emotional intelligence. Always be, check on the positive side, check on the negative side. I'll be like, anything can happen. I'm not saying you should not be positive, but balance the skill. Because if you let your emotion, if you let your expectation get too high, your emotion might get broken. Thank you. Wow, wow, that was amazing. That was amazing. How, how many of us feel very quiet in our spirits, like the way I feel right now? Like I feel very quiet, like my mind is quiet <laughs> because that voice. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. Um, I'll be saying, I don't know why you're not studying psychology or why you're not a therapist, like for real. I don't know. Like I've just been, I've just been, AY, this is it, you need a break. AY, this is it. <laughs> you need to relax because life is not hard. Oh, for every touch. Thank you so much for that amazing session. So if you know you gained one or two things from this session, let up. you got emotional. Oh, oh. Now I still got to this point where I'm like, hmm, why? <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much for this amazing session. Thank you for taking your time to walk us through what emotional intelligence is, what stress is, the symptoms of stress, and the things we can do, especially the aspect of saying no. For me, I feel like saying no is not even just saying no to people. Saying no also includes signing up for some programs. Saying no also includes, you know, a lot of things. So um, I don't know if anybody has questions right now so that we can go ahead to the question and answer session. Uh, yeah, so that we can go straight ahead to the question and answer session. If you have questions, you can simply raise your hand so that I can call you. But um, before we take questions, I want us to have a conversation around these things. Now, for me now, I think I want to talk about managing stress with relationships and relationships. So guys, don't hear me. Like, this is time for us to talk. We just have like 10 minutes to talk about this, right? And I'd be say also, I want to hear your perspective too. Like how, let's say you're a very busy person and you're in a relationship with someone. You have plans, right? You have, uh, you have your own personal schedule and the person also has their own schedule. How do you manage so that you don't get to a point where you're like, guy, get away. <laughs> I'm tired. I don't want to talk to you today. How do we manage this? Like, how do we show emotional intelligence when you are even emotionally attached with someone? Okay, I think that's a question. You're emotionally attached to someone and you also want to show emotional intelligence because you don't want to hurt this person. Because I know, I feel like when, when there, there are ways, there are some things that people would say to us that does not get to us. But when people close to you say those things to you, it just gets to you without your even your own intention. So let's let's talk about that. Like guys, this is there for you to talk. I will call your name. I will call your name. So uh obviously I think I, I would like to talk about it first. Okay. Well, when I'm you sure of you before me know before me not that you are not in a relationship. Okay. Yes, sorry. Okay, so when it comes to you handling the whole relationship stuff, the most important thing is you communicating. Okay. I believe if your partner, know, partner knows you, like they know what you do, they know how you do it, you will not be having issues. Okay. So like, okay, let me say, for instance, I think the example you are giving is you've been busy or, did you give that example? You're, 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 uh, you are stressed, like you are already stressed from left, right, and center. The only thing you want to do is the rest, right? And then you still have an obligation to talk to someone. That okay, so let me see if I wear your shoes. This is what I'm yeah. going to do. I'm actually stressed. 
mm-hmm. and also have to put myself in the in that person's shoes. So what I would do is mm-hmm. I would call the person and okay. I'll be like, first try to do as if you really want to hold the conversation, which I don't want to hold because I'm stressed. But I'm going to talk to you. <laughs> like okay. how are you? How are you doing? Just make it as fast as you can. Then you don't make your tone look excited because you're stressed. Okay. And you'll be like, God, I'm stressed. <laughs> and this is like, okay, okay. down in my own part, if you tell me you're stressed, okay. with it, your tone alone, I'll be like, sorry, mm. okay, what did you do today? In short, I will not give you, I will not give you the chance to ask me what have I done today because I would have given you the gist before. So you're not come and be asking me that okay. question again. So I just be like, okay, I'm stressed. Normally, normal thinking, even no matter how much you put this. The person that you are, but you are stressed. Mm-hmm. Not sure. But I thought that you're like, hello? Well, I'm stressed, Joe. There's a difference. You know that. Yes, yes. Yes. Where yes. I would receive that message. Really? Why do you have to talk to me like that? I know you're stressed, but come on. The man keeps calling me and be like, how are you? Have you eaten? Fine. Mom, I'm stressed. I know you want to talk to me, but you are stressed at that moment. And it's normal for me. It's reasonable for me to give you the time to rest. Except if I'm selfish. But imagine you not being with someone who's not actually... now. I've been wanting to like imagine you say you're emotionally intelligent and your partner is not. Mm, that was a day, that was a day, that was a day. Okay, <laughs> being the matured one and the person becomes the immature one. But mm. there's something you can influence mm. people when it comes to emotion. Okay. If you show maturity in your emotions, it will challenge the other person. That's just it. Oh wow. Like, the person will be like, oh, wow, how are you able to do this? Like, just how? I want to know. That's where you know that, okay, your own emotional intelligence, the level is Otigara, is I. Mm. But I'm a kind of person like, okay, we are, the two of us are on immature level of emotions. I said, I'm stressed. I'm like, I want to talk to you now. We'll just change it for each other. Like, it's not normal. So you don't want to talk to me. And I'll give you the reply. <laughs> They will not stress yes, ourselves yes. in different manner. You see that one even is stressed exactly. again. I'm it's stressed. Like increases, yes. But now increase mm. the stress again. Exactly. So communication is very important. And you need to show your partner that I'm here for you. Mm. There are times I would need you to understand me. Mm. So when actually the reason why they say that it's good to communicate with your partner is not because you need to know about they need to know what you're doing all day is for them to be able to understand when a situation comes when you can actually give them the attention they want. They're going to understand that. Wow, that's another perspective I'm getting now. So we don't just communicate to um, just talk, right? We communicate to understand the person. Exactly. That's why you're communicating. Okay, so I think we have a lot of people that are already writing some things down. <laughs> so I think um, you mentioned something about um, you mentioned something about um, people who catch curse, people who I have a friend. Uh, would I call the person a friend? Okay, I used to okay. have a friend that the reason I say I used to now is because I had to block him and tell him that guy <laughs> I'm going to reach out to you later on for real. Like I'm talking about somebody that we've been friends for over ten years. But okay. I find it hard to to you know differentiate between when he's joking and when he's serious. And when he's serious, you see exactly. You know when you post something on your status and everybody is giving you all this. Oh wow, this is amazing! All this, I didn't see skinny, skinny. And they're like, excuse me, bro, you're my friend. You shouldn't be giving me this kind of response, right? I mean, even exactly. if nobody is giving me any good comments, your own comments should. Whether is it that you don't comment or you give me a good comment, or you you know sometimes you could say something like. You could just say something that just you know meets me in that opposite side where I am angry, and you just go to a point when I realize that okay, the fact that we will now fight 
like we will now you know argue this is my perspective this is my perspective this is what i felt when i saw it this is what i thought about when i sent it i mean this is what i meant when i sent this message and i'm like guy i cannot read your thoughts but i can read your message what the message is giving me is different from what your own you know what your intentions are there's no way i can know your intentions so thank you um so in last month i think late last month or early july i told him that okay we now had another fight again and I said, okay, guy, I think we need to have a break from this whole friendship or meeting. We're just friends. We're not even dating. Now we're fighting like this. Let's have a break because July is like a tight month for me. I have a lot of things to do in July, including rise of words and all of that. So, and I don't want you to be one of those catalysts of, you know, increasing my stress levels. And I blocked him. So I blocked him, you know, meeting the status and all that. So in fact, yesterday I needed to make some calls and it was on the call list i ignored calling him because of that i mean i'm very serious about this i don't want to talk to you for the next god knows when so i, I don't know is my my approach to that and what would you recommend and i if anybody has experiences like that this is time for you to speak up right now don't miss yourself join this conversation raise your hand and let's talk about this this issue of people like that okay i will say Okay, um, you see this part where people catch crews with other people. In my own perspective, I keep believing those people are actually not emotionally intelligent. Mm. Because on their own path, their own thinking, they feel, I just want us to like laugh it out. Let me use that word. Mm. Joke. Mm. Mm. But sometimes some jokes are actually not meant to be jokes. Exactly. Because there are some things you say to some people and it makes them think. In short, think deeper than the way they would think if they feel. But on your own part, you feel I'm catching crews. Mm. Now, there is something about it. People are different. Like I said, it's very important to be able to tolerate people. Like very, very important. Yeah. Okay. But the same time, in as much as you're tolerating people and you're accepting their behavior. There should be emotional understanding between the two of you that this is what I like and this is what I do not like. But if you've tried to communicate with the person, like, I like this, I don't like what you're doing. But the person sees it as, I don't care. See, sometimes it's actually good to say no to people, like I said before. Like, it's not bad if you lose a friend. You know, sincerity is not bad. Because there are some friends that they are not giving the proper energy they should give. So it's okay to let them go. Mm, yes, yes. Okay. And because I feel okay. if it's worth it, imagine now, for instance, now, I also had the friend that we were very close. And okay, the problem is when it comes to like this friendship stuff of people. He, he's, he actually catches screws like he just said. And I'm like, stop it. I don't like it. So now you are my friend. And for me, I used to say, the kind of friend I want, a friend that will benefit me. That, and I'm going to benefit them. Because yeah. everything in my head is, I want to help my friend. Mm -hmm. So I feel, imagine us being in a convoy that we are not helping each other. What kind of friendship is that one? But I'm then talking to you about oh, my really? life issues, serious issues. You catch clues with it. Why? And I stopped mm. talking to him. And he said, what happened? He said, are you angry? I said, I'm not even angry. That's the funny thing. I see that that is the kind of person you are. Exactly. But instead of me <laughs> messing up myself because of you, instead of me having to stress myself, getting angry at you, I would prefer to give you the distance. Mm. Probably mm. one day you realize further. Mm. Why are you even doing this? You don't just stop talking to people for a reason. It's because you've sat down, you've thought about it. Is this person being beneficial to my life? Yes. If no, why are you in my life? At least even if you are not going exactly. to help me, give me that good energy I need. Thumbs up will go a long way. I'm proud of you will go a long way. Keep it up will go a long way. Now you're telling me, ah, you're too serious with your life. Why would you say that? So sometimes, fine, as someone that is emotionally intelligent, you need to tolerate and accept people and understand them. But there are, some, there are times in life when your mental health is very important to you. 
Because the truth is, what surrounds you is what affects, really shapes your life. If you have surround-minded people around you, you don't expect to have bad records of your product of your productivity. No, in all sincerity, this friend that catches screws with you, you can't tell me that if you're in a tight spot, you ever want to go and meet him to advise you on something. Because what you think That's is, true. you will just jump it off in it. Exactly. So imagine having someone, the worst thing is you having people you cannot talk to in your life. Then you don't need them. I remember when a friend said he needed money for business. I said, I can't help you financially. But trust me, I can be here to listen to you, to give you ideas, to advise you, don't do this, do this yet. But imagine you having people that they're neither going to help you with the labor and they won't help you with the mental health. Why are you not having them in their life? Right, it's exactly. okay to lose friends. It's actually okay to lose friends, but it's painful, yes. Now, even aside friendship, even breaks up, you know, it's, sometimes it's good to actually break up with some people. For real. Like, you break up and you are relieved. Exactly. <laughs> Why? Well, and sometimes people want to say, okay, I want to break up with you. You start crying. Wait, calm down. To me, I feel, if someone says you want to break up with me, I will just ask you. Why? I just want to hear your reason. I'm not going to beg you to come. Because if I hear your reason, your reason might be even help me shape my own life better. But even make me understand that, okay, these are things I should do. These are things I should not do. Mm. So instead of you getting scared of losing friends or getting scared of breaking up or feeling, ah, the way I've blocked this person, is it good? You see, most times what, you know, there's empathy and there's that sentiment. I hope you know there are difference in that thing. Yes, yes, yes. In the person's position. But when you are too sentimental, God, most times we take wrong decisions in life having a friend that cannot give you a little piece of advice but because they are sentimental that ah you will feel bad i'm a bad friend you feel that something has exactly. happened you don't want to end it mm -hmm. but if you imagine if i'm even this person would the person really still keep me as a friend think about it mm -hmm. so even emotional intelligence has to do with you balancing being sentimental and having empathy mm -hmm. the difference between me see myself as you and there's a different to see me see not seeing myself as you but feeling pity for you now nah, you shouldn't do with people with pity you should deal with them thinking that okay if i were this would this happen mm. so that your friend that is catching cruise on his own part he's actually not being he's not actually doing empathy because some of them, if you actually catch cruise with them, you will not, you, 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 you feel shocked at their reaction towards you. I need to be like, but it's cruise now. The same cruise we are on, the same. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that you know that, okay, there are times you let people go in your life. Some might not go permanently, some might go permanently. We don't care. Fine, we need yeah. network, we need connection. But if we have a connection that is not even connected, why are we not wasting our time? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. You know, there was a time I like I took my phone and I was scrolling and I'm like, imagine I'm even in a period where I need someone to talk to me. Who can I call? Like, and the person uh, will give me neighbor advice. No, yeah. I don't know. What you see, you I, do? I don't know when I ask people for ah. a question. Not like I don't know, but hello, uh, I want to talk about something. And the next thing I hear is I don't know. If you do, you don't know. You don't tell me you ah. don't know. You try to exactly. act like you listen first. I know something. Because imagine if you were me, how would you feel if I tell you I don't know? Exactly. You know, I would say to us this night is yes, we need to show empathy, but also don't be too sentimental okay. about it. Oh, wow. Well, that's 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 great. That's great. So I want to ask the audience now generally. So have you ever um being with someone, I'm not saying a relationship now, I'm talking about you know someone who is your friend or someone you shall know, and you are complaining about the particular attitude of theirs, and what you get in response is, uh, this is who I am, you have to take me as I am. Do we have anybody like that, and you'd like to share your experience, how were you able to deal with that situation? Like, people, I know people who will tell you that, you should be able to understand me by now, this is who I am, 
and uh, you know, blah 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 blah, all those stories for the gods that God knows is not even interesting to hear. How are you able to deal with them? This is a general question. So if you don't want me to call you out <laughs> or miss yourself by yourself and answer this question, how are you able to deal with this situation? Because these are things that actually, you know, when we talk about emotional intelligence, I'm, for me, I feel like aside work, people also contribute to stress for real. Like people in your life also contribute to stress. So how do you manage people like that? People that will tell you that this is who I am. Take me for who I am. Have you ever experienced, you know, have you ever been in a close contact with them? How are you able to, um, you know, handle that issue? So, who wants to talk? Who wants to talk? Just unmute yourself. Just unmute yourself. Um, thank you very much. <laughs> Abu Bakri, you were saying something. Okay, thank right? you very much. Yeah. yeah. Hello. Hello, yes, hello. Yes, I'm hearing you. Uh, I'm, before, I, before I go further, I want to thank um, the speaker for tonight's session, uh, Ms. Abiso Yadai. Thanks for the wonderfully delivered speech. Honestly, I got emotional with your. Uh, uh, I have the question. I hope you can still hear me. Yes, yes, I can still hear you. All right, concerning the question, uh, have I ever been with um a person, maybe love relation or friendship or like kind of um a stress on me and how um did i go off the person yeah it happens to me i can't even figure out the exact yesha so though let me start with um one of my friends though she's a lady and um she's a kind of a person that doesn't um, understand the kind of person i am and he that kind of relationship later broke and we, I, I have to go off her because you know, we should understand ourselves when we want to relate with one another. We should know our individual differences and how we can. There was a day I to submit an assignment then i collected money from i said i want to write the assignment for is it, it it was an essay so it, it was an in english as i mean i need to write for them and you know four to five different writers that i need to and the content must be different so and this guy just like frustrating, you know, kind of disturbing with calls, even physically disturbing. And mm -hmm. not the first time, not the second time that this thing is happening, it's repeating itself. And I need to call her down. What is really going on? This is me. You must know me for me. This is how we should relate. This is what, and you know, like a kind of um, selfish, selfish rather. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's only your attention that must be granted. It's only that must be uh, paid to. No, that's not supposed to be. And any friend or relationship that is dragging off your what off purpose of off your determination, it is not bad when you what cut off the relationship. It is not bad. It's not, even there was a guy then that we were friends that ah, the guy is just like. The only thing he knows is one uh, be by ah, omo, 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 obey. One thing he shall know is, and you know that is not what, that is not part of your goal. Because whenever you set your goal, and you keep going, you achieve, 
that you are um, um, something um giving you any distraction or going to anywhere that is not work. so i had to block up the friendship the relationship you know so ah it happens so and whenever it happens um i never have any idea or about doing um about it i just would cut off the relationship that's just yeah. it well that's that's true actually while while you were talking i saw something that someone posted and um it has to do with um relationships and the fact that you should not be too scared to cut people off for real now let me let me read it out let me read it out. i'm coming uh, okay, it says delete conversations that hurt you whenever you read them. Delete phone numbers, block contacts, rest restrict, mute, unfollow, remove negative energy from your life. Do whatever it is that you need to do in order to heal and create a positive environment for yourself. But I feel like there is this uh, mentality that oh, I, I don't I, I feel I know it's normal, right? Where you don't want to you don't want to lose friendship. But the truth is, we got to. I mean, as you're evolving in life. <laughs> Because some of us had <laughs> a lot of friends in secondary school. How many of them do you still talk to? How many of them have you talked to in the past one month? Oh, yeah, let's start. Yeah, that's a general secondary school friend. Have you talked to in the past one month? How many of them? Let's start. Past one month. For me, it's zero. Zero. Oh, yeah. For me, one person actually. One. Okay, yeah, it's, it's how many best friends friend. do you have? Your best friend. Okay, that's good. So, others, please. I want to get your answers. You can use the chat box. How many of them? Those curriculum, you know, those people that when you go to school, they are the first set of people that you meet. They are the people you talk to during break. They are the people that you work together at home for those of us that work home while in school. They are the people you stick for with. Me, how many zero. of them do you still talk to? Zero. Imagine in the past one month, people you spent almost you know, at least a year with a whole session. That this is what we're trying to say. Like, it's okay to cut people off if they are not contributing. You know, if they are stressing you, if they are adding stress to your life, and you're also stressing you, it's not that you are you also are being emotionally unintelligent. So, um, I don't know if anybody has questions, so that we can go straight to the question and answer session, um, and then you know continue this conversation some other time. Anybody has questions? Nobody? Okay, raise your hand. You can use the raise hand feature. Okay, I have a question. So, um, okay. So while we are waiting for those, please raise your hand. So I want to now ask our um, speaker. Um, I'm sorry, are you still here? Yes, yes, I'm still here. Okay. Okay, so the question I have is, what is the thin line between you being um, arrogant or you being you know proud and you trying to maintain your your mental health space i don't know if you got that question okay the thing like about you being proud like you being a proud and you there's this notion that yeah especially when you're cutting off people so what's the thin line between ay is proud and ay is trying to just maintain our mental health space or mental health. Did you get that? Hello, yeah, I did. You said the line between being proud. Yes. And showing yes. your mental I'm, I'm health. Asking this, yes, I'm asking this in reference to cutting people off, like people will give you negative energy. Level. Okay. Hello, I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can. Okay. Okay, the thing is, it's not you being proud, but it's you just knowing that which is good for you. Because this is it. If you are trying to, you see, you know, I spoke about the sentiment part. Yes. Yeah, that's now that even relates to sentiments. Now, 
if we if you go if you go in line with sentiment, we we'll say you are proud. Actually, that's okay. sentiment for you. But for someone who is emotionally intelligent, the person realize, Father, you are trying to protect your mental health, which is very important. Because if your mental health is damaged, a lot about you is damaged. That's just the fact. So if you're trying to like, yeah. realizing that, okay, people are saying I'm proud because I'm cutting them off. You're actually not cutting them off, but you're cutting the things that are not helping your life off. Mm. Sometimes you can actually try to like, though it's not everybody you can actually speak to, but there can be a time you, you know, I told, I was talking about emotional intelligence, about tolerance, and I was talking about mutual understanding. If you want to play mutual understanding, then you could yes. just talk to the person and tell the person, okay. I don't like what you're doing. It's not helping me. So it's left for the person to decide if they really still want to stay. Let them know that. The reason why we are cutting them off is because they are not helping you. I don't think there will be anybody that will hear, they are not helping me and you feel like so. Then you can tell the person, imagine if you were me, how would you feel? Would you also like this kind of energy? Mm. Sometimes, even if someone is seeing you as proud, you try to let them realize that I'm not proud, but I know what's good for me. Mm. Mm. I need to take care of me because nobody will take care of me. Exactly. exactly. So you can tolerate them for a long, a long period of time, but when you realize you can't take it again for your mental health, mm. talk to them, let them know that this is it. Do you still want to stay? Do you think we can still be friends? Do you think you can adjust? If they are claiming that you can't tolerate them, why can't they tolerate you, you too? How about that? If they're asking to tolerate their cruise catching, why can't they tolerate your seriousness that I do not like cruise? Exactly. Like, why can't they understand that part? Comes in. So we don't need to, yeah, fine. See me as being proud, but I think I've told you that this is me. I'm going to, okay, now, I'm going to accept you for who you are. Mm. But you need to accept me for who I am. And I yes. feel if you accept me for who I am, you understand that I do not like this. And the two of us will try adjusting. So it's not pride if you feel this person mm. is not helping my life. If someone is not helping your life, feel free to cut them off. But if you value them, of Amen. course, you value our friends. Talk to them. And if they do not accept it, because it's more like, imagine me talking to you that, hey, well, I don't like the way you used to talk and you don't care. It means you're not even accepting my own. You don't care. It means you're not even putting me, okay, that's it. You're not even putting me in your shoes. Like I'm doing, will I like it? So when you're trying to balance your own mental health to being proud, it's you being balancing between empathy and sentiment. No, I'm not going to be sentimental. I'm going to read my mental health. Mm -hmm. But yes, I put myself in your put yourself in my own shoes. Would you like it if I were like this? Mm -hmm. That's just it. So I've just said the thin line between people tagging you as being proud. And you caring for your mental health is you being able to know the fact that empathy and sentiment are two different things that you must not mix together. Wow, that is that is amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your perspective on that um, question. Thank you so much. Okay, um, Abi, uh, Abu Bakri, how does Abu say? Abu Bakri, let's have your question, please. All right, thank you. Um, Yes, right, thank you. Uh, my question goes thus: Let's assume you work in a company or in an organization. Um, your boss is somehow like this. Your boss loves you so much, did your diligence, and a lot. And he or she now what? Now attack. A lot of tasks to you or to your office that you do this, you do this, you do this with a lot of deadline. Deadline comes with a particular time, deadline comes with. And you you are stressed actually, and you feel like, how will you relate with that boss or to let him or I know 
how you can at, at least manage um, some things that should be what dedicated to a lot of people that are you alone and to not see you as a as an arrogant based on what um, the first um, speaker said now not to see you as an arrogant person or not to see you as not serious with the, uh, with your work again what exactly or what are the uh, measures that are can be put in place to just um, do something to that thank you very much um okay in that aspect i feel communication is always very important if i were to place myself in your shoes and my boss likes me like you said likes me and he has put in my care a lot of tax with deadline for me or should i say what i used to do is i'll talk to my boss that sir I'm going to do this job, yes. But sir, if you want me to give you a top-notch result, you need to give me time. See, there's a way you sell yourself that people will reason to what you want. You tell your boss that, okay, sir, okay, for instance, now, my boss gave me a job and he told me to make research on a particular stuff. And I've called people, like I've called people in Abuja, I've called people in Ibado, and they are not giving me the response. And he actually gave me a deadline. So the day it came, and it was like, Abisoye, where is the work I gave you? I talked, even though I knew I had nothing. I gave him a reason to feel, oh, she knows what she's doing. I didn't show that I was tensed. I didn't show I was nervous. I didn't show I was scared. He said, I showed him that father. Yes, sir, uh, I made a research. It's working fine, but... I still feel what I've done can still, I can still make it look more catchy if I do more research. So instead, I'm trying to add new things. Now, his own thinking is, he feels I've done it, though I've not done it. But I told him, I, in my own ex expertise, I want to put in more things. I need to chip in more things. There is no boss that will not want you to give him a perfect job. Instead, you just sell yourself in a way that will make him feel, all right, you can have a time. You know, if you're the kind of person that you do your job very well, your job might, your, some boss will ask you, when do you think you can submit this? Because they know once you submit, you submit credit, you submit a perfect job. So if you have a lot of tax on your table, you don't need to rush it up because if you rush it up, you will do rubbish. Like, no, you actually do rubbish. Instead, what you do is, you talk to your boss. You don't tell him you are not doing it. No, you tell him you are doing it. But you tell him that from your own expertise, you want to give him the top-notch results. And if you want, if he wants you to give you that result, tell him that it's going to take you more time. The highest you can do will be like, ah, oh, you shall re up. Eh? Okay. It, there's no you will not add to, like give you more time to it. So once you know you have a lot of tax, talk to your boss, give him a reason to know that, give him a reason to want to like, okay, go on, I trust your expertise. Let me use that word. Your credibility, let me use that for you. Like, okay, all right. Because if you say you want to force yourself to do everything, you might actually do it too. But you can't compare what you've, what you've done in Rush to what you take your time to do. All right, thank you very much for that response. Okay, thank you. Um, Damla said he has some additions to me. Yeah. Um, okay. Good evening. Well done, I'll be sorry for that answer. And um, Abu Bakr, let me just address your question from this angle. See, when you are working with people, once you are a staff of any company or any organization or anything you belong to, you have limited excuse. You don't make excuse like a volunteer or any part of the team. Once you belong there, and if you are given a task, that's why you have to understand clarification before you embark on any project. You don't 
I embark on a project and you now request for um, time at the deadline is a sign of irresponsibility. But if they give you a task, maybe you're working in any industry or anywhere you belong to, and you know that by the time you started the job, you know the time allotted will not be okay. You quickly request in project management, in time manage, uh, in the scope of time management, you request for more time before the deadline. Once you reach the deadline and you are not just making um, excuses for not doing it, it's totally out of it. Personally, you can be sacked. But by the time they back you on the project, you know with all the work, you know from the starting that this will require more than enough time. Like the scenario she, that our speaker created, you source for information in different respective location and you're not getting it. By the time you know, your consciousness will tell you that you cannot meet up with the deadline. Then you quickly request for time, not at a deadline. You don't ask for extra time. At the deadline. Yes, so with, by the time you embark, you must have understood the proceedings. And someone that gave you a project is not a novice that will not know what he's expecting. Yeah, that bank that uh, what you'll be delivering will be something. And it's more like you launching into the content creation. By the time you are given a kind of a work to do, the person that allotted the work to you has expectation, he knows what is expected. So definitely, by the time you start or to get this job started, you will know that what the engagement you have now is high and you need to know to cut around it. Then let me quickly chip in something that uh, I had uh, my speaker talk about that is very, very important. See, when you are building yourself, you don't give audience to people's comments. Yes, many young people that I've met, most especially in Africa, we we over we are over expectant. We are so dependent that if someone, someone gives you one special college, one special comment that you feel good at yourself. No, if you know that your mental health is deteriorating and you are not fine, you speak out. Not until maybe you, someone have to make you feel somehow you are giving yourself unnecessary dig. Yes. Understand the relationship pattern with people. Like I she has said amazing point. And I, I joined late because of what I'm doing. She said amazing point as regards that. Don't make anybody make you, don't allow anybody to make you feel less. You are more than the way you are. And see, all these things that many people are feeling that nobody cares. You just think that people are so people are after you because you think you are this and that. Forget it. It's because you have results and you have resources. If you are down, everybody will jack up, confirm. But they will tell you that they have their life to cater for. So please take care of your mental health. Take care of your mental health. Keep up, give time, enough time. My, I used to be a workaholic person, yes. Uh, you see me here, you see me there, you see me here, you see me there, yes. And I don't like disappointing people. I give you my best. I think I'm, yeah, I'm there. I will work together for a long time. She can have fun. That. But the day I was on the hospital bed, and I, I my girl said something. That she, she said, Jaga. "What can you, what can you do now?" And I was like, "Ah, Oga, you are very correct. I cannot do anything right now. But I've been able to create structure that can keep moving even when I'm down. And that's the way it should be. You cannot do everything. They are hating you now because you have something. I will not deceive you." get broke, get out of time, or get out of resources. All these people that are surrounding you that you think I didn't baba you, baba, okay? You will see them in any dimension. It's so it's just life. So please take care of your mental health. If you are stressed, take break. I, I think that I, that's amazing about Ayoko She will, she will freeze her WhatsApp on social media. You cannot come and stress her. And that's what you should do. So your emotional intelligence is, is is beyond uh, you just being jumping around or relationship with people or adding pressure. It's more about your health. You can do anything now because you are healthy. Once you are down, you need life to en you need any life to enjoy activities. And it's because you are fine that you can. If you are down, I can see I've experienced it. If you are down like this, 
Eh, oh, you enter the hospital too. <laughs> Nobody cares. You when you take you enjoy the drips. So please take care of your mental health. Emotional intelligence comes in character. I am they was talking something. I wanted to make contribution to that. I just like them just pause. I was like, this is me. This is this is where I am. There's nothing like that. There's nothing like uh, that's me. That's my personality. It's because you accepted it. You can change anything. You can learn anything. Yes, one of the staff of a big company in Nigeria was addressing me somehow one day. And I was like, ah, I wish you know me that it's one that you are talking with. But I was like, well, I just told the yoga, I said, this girl, your, your staff lack emotional intelligence because she's under pressure. She just, she just talk anyhow. So you need to learn how to communicate, now to behave yourselves. You never can say who's watching you. You never can say that. I think I need to make a post now why I won't take much of your time. But what she said today is really, really profound. Understand the cycle. Yeah, if you are down, who are people that you can call on and they can they can they can die for you? Who can you call on when you are down that they can they can they can sacrifice a lot of things for you and they can be there to rescue you? If you cannot find that in your circle, oh my God, you need to quickly work on that. But people that are surrounding you is because there is something about you that really is really attracting. Yes, if you are the shapes today. All these your fine fine people, they will run away. And all this love that you're talking about is because there's an attraction. There's something that draws that. So please, you need to understand your cycle. Understand people that you are. You need to invest on people that you need to pay attention to. People that you need to invest on, not people that you really know or really really careful. You just need to just know the strategic people in your life that you see. People will follow you normally, but who are that? Those like three, five. I think I asked that when I was taking my session. Five people that are very important to your life and you talk, you spend your time the most. These are the kind of people that you can always bank when you are down, they are there for you. When they don't say you are arrogant, they can't even say it because you guys are always pushing yourself. But people that you are looking up to, people that you call yourself friend, that they are the one killing you, you are the one saving them. You are not, you are, the value exchange is really poor. The mechanism of growth is really down. So you need to really work on that and know how to put things in place. Investment in the right friendship we enable your life to get to your destination and you get the quick result. Thank you, Ayam. Wow, well, well, thank you so much for your contribution, Lord Amlari. Thank you. Yeah, the truth is, it all boils down to your relationships with people. Yes, it all boils down to your relationship with people. If you're dying like this, who's going to stay beside you? Who's going to call you every day to cheer you up? Who's going to, you know, say, I'm don't worry I'm, I'm i know i'm busy right now but i can you know post on these things and come around to help you do you have friends like that are you a friend like that oh, that's a big question anyways okay thank you so much so royal point i don't know what your real name is but what i can see on zoom is royal point so can we have your question good evening yeah good and evening. Thank you, Mr. Victoria, for the awesome uh, speech. So um, this uh, scenario happened some times ago. So there is a friend of mine that I saw that she's doing something that is not really okay on a normal day. She gets so, and then I was like, this thing. I shouldn't be too forward. So I discussed it with one of our other friend. And she was like, she has also noticed it, but she's afraid to talk to her. And I was like, ah, I was still open to tell you. And then if you understand my point from where, from where I'm talking to, or from where I'm going, so that we'll be able to like approach on it. And she was like, what if uh, she doesn't uh, understand our points of concern and then what if she what if she's you know like behaving somehow to us just because we point out something she's not doing very good and I was like oh, you have a point there but I haven't thought of that I was just like this thing is bad and then as a friend I would just tell you this thing is bad and if you like change and then if you do if you like as well don't change so my own my own uh, concern and the help that i can render is like tell you that this thing you are doing is bad but because my other friend was like uh, i should consider all all sides like what if she's 
doing some out to us because of what I've pointed to her. So I was discouraged to tell her. I haven't told her yet. So, but when uh, Sister Abise was now talking about uh, empathy and then, um, what was this or that thing? And Sentiment. yes, I was like, what I've done, is it right? And then my other friend that said, what if she's a, uh, uh, she, uh, what if she's give us, giving us attitude after we must have talked to her is a reason also right she gets so that one is one question should I ask the other one now or I let her answer the, this first question first um, okay. say, do you want to answer the question yeah, I can first. answer the question all right. Okay, so as regards your friend, one, if you call yourself friends, then friends are people who are real to you. Do you know that? Now, if you and your other friend are scared of talking to her because you do not want her to probably change her attitude towards you or stop talking to you or hold it against you, you guys are being sentimental and you are not helping her at all. It would be very bad if someone from outside corrects her about that behavior. And now let me, let me, now let us use empathy instead. Imagine you were the one now, you are the person in question and you have this bad character and I'm your friend and I refuse to talk to you about it. But someone outside spoke to you about it. Tell me deep down, wouldn't you have thought that, is it that my friends no notice this thing? or they just choose to ignore it because they don't care? Won't you have that thought? I will, I will, I will. I'll be like, can you want roti? That means it's fake friend, we are fake friendship now. So the thing is, you should not be scared to tell your friend things that are right. No, friends do not lie to each other. Friends should be real, not fake. Talk to them, yes. What if she stopped being my friend? It does not matter. But you know, at a point in time, you've tried to correct that to be good. Because if she's good, it's going to benefit you too. And yes, it's normal for you. It's normal for people to overreact sometimes when you talk to them. Most times, it's because we are scared of that overreaction. Now, that, that is why we keep quiet. But it's not, it's not meant to be. If someone is your friend, your friend is you. How would you feel if you are going a wrong path and none of your friend could call you that, come now, this place you are going to is wrong. So you guys should speak to this friend, talk to her. Yes, she's going to talk. See, in short, you don't, if, when she talks, you don't need to get angry. Instead, show her that maturity. Let her talk, let her talk. But you tell her, but you know we are saying it for your own good. That's what you need to tell her for your own good. We are your friends. I will not lie to you. We don't need to be fake with you. You don't need to get scared. Remove sentiment. Put your, use empathy now. Be that person. How would you feel? So you know this why I'm doing bad and you could not talk to me about it. In short, that's enough reason for us to even cut you guys off. That is even a very good reason for us to cut you guys off because you guys are not real to her. You are not talking to her as a friend. I hope that answers your question. Yes, ma. All right, okay, so can I have your second question? Okay, so I noticed some things. So there are some people that regularly I share their status, like, like if there is anything like news opportunities and then so, but there are some people that sometimes I get overwhelmed by what they post. I don't know, but I just noticed that I'm like, after viewing their status and I'll be like comparing myself to them, like, why am I not doing this thing that they are doing? Why am I not making money as they are making? And then I, just, I was just like, see, I don't need this thing. So to calm myself, I noticed that that is what I did most time. I would just abandon their status for some, for some time. I won't, I won't bother to check on their status at all. But then with this topic tonight, I was like, is it my approach to that stress? 
is he is he the right one? And then what should have what should I have done better? So you get that's my other question. Oh, okay. So now this example you just painted has happened to me before. There's this person's status that whenever I view as does, I, I don't even try to say intimidation. No, I feel down because I feel hey. So be say, what are you doing? No, what are you doing? And there was a point that I actually muted her because I felt I don't like the energy or the way I think whenever I view that status. Then there was a particular day I just sat down and I felt, why am I letting other people's life influence my life? Even if it's to influence, it's meant to be like a challenge, not a comparison. There's a difference between when you see someone as a challenge and when you see someone as a comparison. You don't need to see the person that, ah, this person is doing this. I mean, I've not done anything. See my life. No, it should be like, hmm, so this person has done this. I can do this too. I need to work on some things. Just have that possible. Don't be, that's why, face your fear. Why, wait, why are you getting depressed because you are seeing someone's status? Why? It shouldn't be. Fine, you see it, you feel, ah, oh God. Or maybe probably, even if it's a secondary school classmate, probably the person got a new ride and you feel, I don't have a bicycle. You're not feeling depressed. No, instead, it should be like, on my own part, stuff like that, what I'll just say it's God Almighty, my time will come. Bless me, direct me. What do I need to do to be able to get to this level? I don't want to rush, but I don't want to stop. I want to be on the race. I don't want to rush, but I don't want to stop. But I want to be on the normal pace. So if when you see things like that, you should not see them like an intimidation or you start comparing yourself. Sit as a challenge and say to yourself, I will be this. Yes, I will get there. And always bear in mind that we come from a different background. Things might go easy, rosy for this person. And you, you might be here trying to like, you are the one doing the old ad libo. Not all of us are born with silver. Think, see things in a different way. You feel okay, this person is like this, probably because the person is from a rich family. Even if the, the person is not from a rich family, probably because the person has not. See, nothing comes easily. You need to understand that. So if you're seeing someone that is doing this, Hello, so we can't hear you clearly again. It's like your voice is low. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, it's better now. Yes. Okay. I said so. Anytime I actually, even now, I view as status a lot. And whenever I view it, I say to myself, I can't do more than this. But I just need to be. I just need to take it step by step, because I have God, and I don't know what She has. So some me saying that ah, oh, see this girl, God, when. In short, I don't even like using that word, God, when. I don't like it. I just feel, God, do my own. Like, do my own at the right time. So don't let someone's progress or anything be intimidate you or give you a reason to compare yourself. It should never. It should only be a challenge that you should face. Yes, face it. And be affirmative that I will do better because I can do better. But I just need to take it step by step. I hope that answers your question. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much. I'm clear now. You're welcome. Okay, okay, okay. That is super amazing. Thank you so much. We have exactly one minute to officially end this event, to officially end Warriors Mint for today. So here is me saying a big thank you to every single person that made it to tonight's session. Thank you so much, Abisoye Ajayi. And thank you so much for every to everyone that made this session more, you know, practical. We could see how, you know, <laughs> how stress reflects in our relationship with people, how it reflects with the way we perceive things, right? For me, I would say that instead of allowing people to feel uh to make you feel bad 
let them show you, let their lives, let their stories show you the possibilities that exist if you can put in the effort, if you can tap into your potentials. That is just it. I mean, that is even the basis, the philosophy behind testament of growth you would see someone i mean i, I think okay we did not ask for their ages there, there's no none of our speakers that you know they are real age except for those you look at them and you're like okay i think this person should be around 23 or 24 or 22 or whatsoever it's not about the person's age it's not about anything they let our stories let the stories of people around you whatever they post let it just show you a possibility, the possibilities that exist when you tap into your potentials. And it is not even the stories of, you know, people that are getting things through illegal means that wants to inspire you, though. <laughs> so that is just it. I mean, it's a whole lot. It's a whole lot. Emotional intelligence, stress management, within and without, it's a whole lot. So um, thank you so much, everyone, for I'm making it to this session. Thank you so much, Abisoye, for um, honoring our invitation and taking your time, you know, to speak to us and also to answer our question and stay until now. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very, 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 very much, everyone. God bless you. I'm looking forward to, you know, next time. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow we are having our get together, Warriors get together, and it's by 6.30 p.m. Come around. It is very, very important. You want to know the work, the clan of the week tomorrow. You also want to know what and what we are introducing because we are introducing something new and amazing for week three you know if you if you are following the trends you will see that our week is not you know we're always adding spices to every new week this week we started the road challenge next week we have another thing to drop so you wanna we're not dancing tonight our dj had to go off sorry <laughs> sorry and my pc is also off so there's no way i can play music from this end anyways thank you so much guys for coming around tomorrow by 6 30 p.m. We want to see you with your dancing shoes with every 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 everything we're going to be having an amazing discussion before that party i'm not going to tell you about the discussion yet but then <laughs> if you want to serve grace if you want to learn for the future if you want to write notes <laughs> if you want to laugh come tomorrow by 6 30 p.m and we're going to have an amazing session together thank you so much everyone good night good night the name is Ayopelumi. see you tomorrow yes i am outside actually i'm outside like i'm outside i've been outside since 6 30 and it has been cold but you know it's worth it yes the conversation tonight was worth the cold and everything like that thank you so much guys so i want to see you sharing your action points in your clans Go to your clan now, share the action point, share what you've learned, share how you are going to be taking action on what you've learned so far, the specific actions you're going to be taking. For me, I've cut off some friends, so I basically don't have friends to cut off any longer. But I think I really want to spend time thinking more about my life <laughs> after this meeting. Okay, guys, you can leave the meeting now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. There's no music today, except somebody wants to play music for us. Our DJ is not around. So if you want to play music for us, you know, you can be nice enough to play music. It's no problem. It's no problem. It's no problem. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have any friends are comfortable, yes, so. We still want to tap Grace. Who still wants to tap Grace? That is still sitting here. Praise Ajay, I can see your face. How are you doing? Hope you're better now. Yes, good evening, Ma. 